introduce you. Should we introduce ourselves real quick? In case you don't know everybody. Okay. We have a young boy. Hi, Mike. Hi. 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 What's your major? I'm actually a history major. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jefferson. I'm a history degree CP major. Hi, I'm Boston. I'm a psychology major. Lily, who's my name? You know me already? You were? My name is Martin. And your major? I'm a political science with an international question. Nice to meet everyone today. Thank you for inviting me. We have somebody else that just walked in. Um, are you going to join us for Mentor Monday? Yeah. Okay. Um, education major. And children have seen. But, um, Okay. Uh, today we have Carl Angelucci. He is the library. He works for the library as the director of library services. Dr. Carl Angelucci is the director of library services at the LHU Library, Central Connecticut State University in Rand, Connecticut. He has been employed in the library services in higher education since 1993. He has many leadership roles in library association and has served as the president of the Connecticut Library Association and has also served twice as the chair of the board of directors of the Connecticut Library Consortium. He has a doctorate in history from Providence College and a master's in library science from Simmons College. Dr. Antonucci's dissertation and is on machine politics and urban renewal in Providence World Island. During the era of major just may may or just Jewelry, his other areas of interest include Italian American studies. Dr. Antonucci and Professor Kenneth DiMaggio have ran to fight for Italy to fight for America for Italians in Connecticut. It was a big fight for library. Published in the Connecticut History Review, Dr. Angelucci and Sharon Clapp also have edited the Vida Leadership Guide, the library, the librarian as an entrepreneur, leader in technologies, published by Rowan and Littlefield in 2017. Dr. Angelucci teaches a course on Italian American culture at Central Connecticut State University and is an adjunct in the Graduate School of Information and Library Science at Southern Connecticut State University. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me again uh, here. And my neighbors here in the library, so I, uh, we, we welcome you here to the library. And I like what you're doing here with all the, the books that we, we helped you. got the, the great donations. We helped you to catalog those. And we hope that that will continue to uh, grow the uh, collection. I brought some uh, pamphlets. I'll leave some here as well, but you guys could each pass them down and we can take a pamphlet on uh, who will pass out to our students this semester. You guys are our students as well. Okay. About being new to the library, what you need to get up to speed. So, uh, and if you're out there, uh, uh, you can always come to the, the center here and get one or uh, in the library we have these. But this is just a good handy dandy guide of what the uh, library has to uh, offer. And we've got many different majors as we talked about here and the library can help all of you with your uh, research because how many have been doing research papers? How many have one this semester? So we can make this informal. And if we're history majors and psychology, education, political science, you're going to use the library uh, for research. And Martini worked for us in the library. So he's a good resource as well. He worked on our veterans history project. Uh, that's where we uh, we have uh, oral uh, interviews of people that fought the different uh, uh, wars, and they also they give us some of their uh, letters and photographs to upload as well, and that's all digitized and put on on the web. So uh, he did a great job with helping uh, helping with that, and we still have that uh, that program. So what I want to do today is uh, two things: uh, one, to uh, talk to you about some of the library services, and two, to kind of let you know about some careers in library. And information. 
science that you could uh, do uh, yourselves. I think it's a great career. They asked me when I came, uh, Millie and Martine were asking me how many years I was in the field. So I said 1993, and Martine was born in 19, so he knew it was exactly 30, 30 years. I had to think about him. He knew from his, where it was 30, 30 years. So it's been a long time uh, from when I got my graduate degree in library and information science. And um, so it's also, I, it's been a great uh, career for me as well. So uh, we want to tell people about it. There's something that you could do. And I'll explain a little bit more of that uh, as we as we uh, go along. But what I want to first ask is how many have used a uh, Google to do a search on something and for their for their papers? You guys probably use it or or in, in general life. And how many have done a search and got like all, a large number of hits on, on it? So how many hits did you did you get? You know, just Depending on what, it could be like thousands. Yeah, thousands of hits. So yeah, at least. It's a good answer. Good, good, good answer because that's what happens. But we have some of the resources in the library that are behind paywalls. We pay for them here, but they give you information that is written by scholars, and you can really drill down to just find the information that you need on your your topics for your research. Whereas there's a lot of good stuff on Google, you never know who's written this stuff on Google and you want to be critical. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of these databases here in the library that uh, we pay for that we want you to use. So I don't know if you could bring, could you bring up the library homepage for us? If you can, I just want to show you just briefly. Okay, great. And this is the library homepage. And if you could just arrow toward the, the first thing, if you can't be at the library, see what it says on the right? It says reference. Do you need help? You can check right now. Most of the hours at the library, yep, and then there's two boxes right there. You could use one or the other. And you could always chat with the librarian, even if you're at home, because how many do research from their dorm or at home? It's a lot of time. So if you don't want to come into the library, you can use that chat service. And when we're here, you can, uh, you can uh, get a librarian live and they will help you. And our librarians are on, the, how many have been on to the second floor of the library? The reference mm -hmm. section is on the, the second floor. We know everybody likes the first floor, I do too, because I go down to get Starbucks coffee. But mm -hmm. the second the second floor is where the, the librarians uh, are, and they, yeah. and, and they can help you. And every librarian on our staff, they have a master's in library and information science. Many have other master's degrees as well, but they're trained to be librarian to help you with information needs in how to find information, how to evaluate information, and how to use your information and your papers in assignments. And you guys, how many have papers this semester again you're, you're doing? What, what's your paper on? Because you're a history major, right? Yeah. So, I remember that. so you must have a, a research type paper, right? Oh, yeah. I'm actually trying to like hone down my research uh, subject, but I am going to be focusing a lot on Peru. Oh, you're going to be focusing on Peru. Oh, great. So you're going to be doing some Political? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, more on the end of, of Terra. Okay, so the end of Terra. So if you go uh, in, in our, uh, what, what is your name again? Jefferson. Okay, Jefferson. If you can go where it says uh, the link up there, where it says research. It's across the top. And then what you want to do is it says research guides and course guides. You, you right, right there. There you go. If you click on that, and right here, if you arrow down a little bit, we have all these, what we call them, lib guides. We make them the librarians, but you can do it by subject or a special course. If Sometimes your course has one. And if you click on subject guide right there, and right there, if you keep looking, look at all the different courses that you that you have there. And if you go to top, the top again, let me see if you see something on, uh, say you did, just go down and see if there's a uh, history. Wait a minute. No, just go to American history. Oh, Latin, oh, there it is right there. Latin American, Latino, and Caribbean topics. And this is a research guide that we put together for you that can kind of help. You can say you how to find articles, how to find books, using all the library stuff. So you don't have to, as you said very well, go to Google and find all these sources that might not be right online. You want to drill down, you can go to these guides, and the librarians put these together. So you see on the side, documentation, there's films, how to cite your sources, uh, uh, it has a link to the center here, so you can click on the, the center for people that don't know, and they know that this is a great center. We have all these Thank great you. books yeah. and resources. We got the, the studies program. We got the you know maybe 50, 60 guides right here, modern languages. So and this shows you how to find all of this information here with and see if you go click clicking down. So if you're in this guide and you 
says chat with us. So if you have a question on this while you're doing it, and you say you're in your dorm room or at home, because we're all not here 24, so you can go right there. Mm -hmm. So most of the hours that we're open, we have uh, the guide. And we have our hours are in the um, in the guide that you uh, that you uh, have. If you click on our uh, website, it gives you the, the hours. But we're open from Monday to Thursday, 8 a.m. to 10.45 p.m., Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.45, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3.45, and Sunday, 2 p.m. to 9.45. And the hours are on our website as well. And they give you, in your guide, we just, we wanted to save space. So we said just click right here on, on the uh, on the top there. It'll, oh. it'll give you the hours. But they're on our main uh, page when we're open. So mm -hmm. the fourth floor here is where you guys are, is the quiet study floor. And we have many books in the library as well as study spaces. And we have downstairs, you can take circulation uh, out as well as uh, find things on Missouri. So if you go back to our front page, to our main page, it will, uh, and if you go under uh, about, up on the top, if you click on about the library, it gives you all of this uh, information, shows you how many books we have, all the resources, and if you click on that hours uh, right there, this gives you the hours. And during the break, we have updated hours, so always check on our calendar to check if there's President's holidays or weekends, uh, and things like that. So I encourage you to go to some of our uh, databases as well to uh, to look and to find some of these great things and to discover. And the main thing I can leave you with today is just if you have a question, because it's a lot of information, I just ask. Ask one of our librarians on the second floor, our people at uh, staff and uh, on the circulation desk can help you on the first floor, help you to get anywhere around. We're very friendly staff, so just ask us. Because who's kind of intimidated when they come in the library? I am sometimes. I used to be. Kind of there's a lot of books, a lot of information. We want you to be comfortable with the uh, information and use it because it's your library and we have all that information for you to use and be successful uh, with it. We can't help to write the paper. That's the writing center because sometimes we, I tell students when I teach, if you need help with the writing, go to the writing center, but we can help with the research. And who, who who's ever cited sources? They use a citation guide. If you use a source, you've done that, right? And your history papers, you, you want to do it toward a style guide. We have them here and we also... Uh, have them for, um, we, we can help you uh, with that. We also have uh, embedded here a lot of video tutorials. So if you just want to click on one of those, you don't have time to come, we, we're able to uh, to help you uh, with uh, with that as well. And the videos are for, to show you how to, how to use, how to use the, li how to use the library, yep. Yeah. Um, can so you run with this and, and how you, just how you did this here? Uh, Yep. If you go again to re go, go again to research. But for like um, outside of this. Um, yeah. You could, guide. Yep. You could do it right. You know. So if you can go to the lib guide, there's research guides, and it's got everything right there. If you click on that, and then you keep clicking down, it says you're friendly librarian. So if you click, you go all the way down the bottom. It just shows you the staff right there. That can help you. You can even email them as well. And if you go further up, some that some that want their photographs, but they're still here to to help us. But then if you go to go to where it says subject guide uh, for me right there. So if you click again on say uh, art history, say the third one, again, it gives you uh, all of this information on all the different <clears throat> topics that we have. And if you click on on the uh, left, it says search tips in the blue. You go right to search tips right, right there. Here is right here. It shows you how to search. See, so yeah, we have all these different videos embedded all throughout the, uh, and what Boolean logic just means that you want to use keywords that best describe your topic. So sometimes you're trying to find a certain topic in Peru, there might be certain terms or of certain terms that you go in there to search with. So we 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 show you how they do this uh, with this Boolean cheat sheet. So it's like a video showing you. A video showing you some is text based, but if you go to the if you go to the top, it'll show you uh, right there is how, how you search with the. Uh, some of them we've made, some of them we, we find that other universities have made, and it's all right here for you to uh, to take a look at uh, on the library page. We also have services that you could uh, chat with a librarian, but we also have another uh, service called Book a Librarian. Because say your paper were Peru, I'll use you as a good example if you don't mind. That, you know, you've gotten some information, but you want a more extensive research appointment, you want to learn more how to research more, or you hit a brick wall. You can sign up with one of our librarians for what's called a book a librarian session. You can either do it online or live. So if you want to come in, and if you go right to our uh, 
to our page. It will give you uh, information on how to book book a librarian. Uh, right there, right? if you click on that, book a librarian. And what you can do there, there's a 30 minute consultation and you could book it through right here. And if you know a librarian and you want one that you work with, you can go with them. Or if you don't, you can just do anyone. It'll give you anybody. And when you pull their name up, it'll show you the times they're available, match it up with the time when you're available. And you can either do it online, virtually, they'll meet with you, or we can come into the uh, library and they just ask about the details that you need. So would that be helpful to some of you guys? So like setting up a tutoring session of sorts. Yes, yeah, exactly. Good way to put it. just for, for resources. So okay. the librarian can go through with you. Oh, this is my topic. This is what I've done. This is what I need to find. And they can go through all these sources with you. So we call it book a librarian. So it's been a popular, we've done it during the pandemic as well. We started it live just before the pandemic. Then we had all leave as we remember that day when we had a all leave campus. So we do it virtually as well, more convenient. But if you're convenient, you want to come in and you can sit this half an hour time. You can go up to the desk and ask as well, but this helps because you have a time just individually, like a tutoring session. It's a good way to uh, it's a good way to put it. So that's here in the that's here in the library as well. You can use a book a librarian. So if you ever think you could use that, you could uh, could uh, use that as well um, here. And if you click on databases, uh, that it, it's the there, it's right underneath uh, on the top. See right there. And then you click there, see a list of all databases. And if you go, you can even do it by subject. But if you just scroll down a little bit, what's it say? I, my eyes as I'm getting older on the screen on the top. How many databases? I think it's 171 yeah. that we yeah. have. So there's all these different data. You can even do it by subject, but there's all great um, there's all great databases on all your different topics. And there, if you click by subject, there's all the different uh, subjects. And these databases, a lot of them are full text. We have electronic books. Uh, we also show you where the books are in the library. You can go get a hard copy book. So if you click, if you keep going down in the A's for a minute, I just want to show you one that's a really good one that uh, if you want to keep keep going down it, you keep going a little more. So yeah. the databases update their information, but we just have access to them? You have access to them, yeah, and they update. I mean, and there's all, some of them are older. We have some older periodicals that go back many, many years. Some are more recent. So keep going. Just one more little thing down here. I just want to show you. It's the Ancestry.com for uh, searching your. Uh, there it is, Ancestry Library. So click on that. Oh. And this is very expensive that you can get it at home on your own. But we have a. a, 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 a how many have used this before to search your family history? I haven't, Kim. I've always wanted to. I, I want to do 23 and me, but I haven't done that. Yeah, you could go this right here. And this is a. You could go right here. And if you just click on begin searching. You know, when, when we can show you how to do this, but you can search your family tree. It goes back There's many different records from all over the, the world. I use it a lot for my Italian ancestry. I go back and there's even some records from Italy that I can find ships records, everything Amazing. right here. So that that's a free resource that we want to just show people because it kind of, uh, you know, it's expensive if you buy a subscription. I used to try to buy every just for the trial and then and then after the trial was done, I, I won't renew it because it's expensive. But, this is available for the students, so this is a really good, uh, it's a really good database that you might want to try. Even if your family members are outside of the United States, because um, I was born in Perth, so. Yeah, I think you, you, they, they, they are adding records all the time. Um, oh, wow. They're adding records all the time, so you want to try this database to see if you can find some uh, as well. And it's got, uh, for, you know, uh, things from around the world. So if you go down to Explore by Location, wow. right down there, and then you go oh, to, cool. yep, you can go to, say, so go down to Peru and you can take a look. Yeah, there it is right there. Yep, and you can take a search right there and you can find whatever they might have uh, there. And we can help you if you want to really drill down and be specific, but you can try it on your own and it's uh, intuitive. You can learn how to do it and, uh, and do some searches on your uh, family history, very interesting to find things on your uh, family history. So you might want to, you might want to try it. And if they come here to like with immigration, you talked about earlier, um, mm -hmm. you could find all kind of immigration uh, information on that, naturalization information, city directories, even more recent ones. So you want to try to find any family relative uh, you can. And they're adding to this all the time. So you want to, you want to keep looking all the time because they've always, they're scanning they're scanning more and more all the time with this uh, database. So that's a fun database to uh, to use as well. 
And the main thing you want to know when you use the library is just you, if you're using it from home, use your blue net. I'm going to have the blue net card, so you have, yeah. have this, just have this with you, and it will. Ask, we're not. It's not going to ask us to do it here, but it'll ask you at home for your blue net information, so you can, so you can log into the uh, to the library and use that from anywhere. Even if you're on vacation somewhere, if you want to use the library, you can just log into our main homepage and use the library. Another great thing is called, uh, and if you go back to the uh, beginning page right here and go under uh, where it says services up on the black, it says, and go to the second one, it says interlibrary loan Iliad. This is just a, uh, a, a, a that's the name of the, the system, it's called Iliad, but it opens up interlibrary loan account for you. You can sign up for one of these accounts. And what that is, if we don't have the information here, you can use this to get information from books and articles from anywhere in the world, and we have them shipped right here. A lot of times now articles, even I always say, you can go to lunch when you come back, they scan the article, and a lot of times it's here for you. A lot of times you wait for a hard copy book, it'll take uh, at least 10 days to get here, but it will be shipped here, and when you're done, you can ship it back. So it's really uh, it's really good, because sometimes you can find even textbooks using interlibrary loan, and they'll ship the book, not all the time, but once in a while you find it, and um, you can uh, take a look uh, to uh, here to uh, to get it, but you should sign up always for an Iliad uh, page, and then you can always log in with your username and password. That's called interlibrary loan, and we we, we have a we have a service here uh, as well. So there's a lot to the the library, but there's print books uh, in the stacks uh, if you if you use them here. We have cost reserve. Sometimes your professor will put hard copy books on reserve or articles. A lot of times now they upload them to Blackboard. But how many have gone and used the cost reserves downstairs at the circulation desk? You can go and there's books on there. We also have a textbook collection. We don't have every textbook, but we try to buy copies of the popular ones. We can't give them to you to take up, but you can use some of them. So say it takes you a while to buy your textbook, you can go down and take a look at that textbook before the time. We have group study rooms. This is the quiet study floor. We have computers, printers. We're going to get a 3D printer. It's going to be coming back in the library. And we also have the archives and special special collections for uh, for some of our archival uh, materials that we have. The history of the university, GLBTQ archives, uh, archives. So there's a lot of historical archives that you might want to use in research as well. So the archives and special collections are on the uh, the second floor in the library. So any questions you you guys might have as we stop this section of the library there's a lot there but if you do go to your home page and take a look we can help you if not ask us any questions you know and if you need us we'll, we'll be very happy to help you if we have a research paper to do what is the first that you recommend for us to look the up the information and well i'd go to the i'd go to the research on the live guides is first just to see if your subject a guy was there, like for yours, the Latin American mm -hmm. one was there. Take a look at that for us, and it will guide you to the different databases because we have 171, so you don't want to start with 171, you want to narrow it down. Okay. And if you still can't find some information and you want to go for a walk in appointment to one of the librarians on the second floor, or chat, see what says, ask a librarian, need some help. You can chat and they can get you started. And if you still need more after that, you can come in for one of the book of librarian appointments. Mm -hmm. So have you guys ever thought about creating an application for the like cell phones like the Androids and Apple phones? You can use the you can use the you can use the library from your phone. From, yes, but like a singular application like tap like that particular reboot for the library. We haven't yet, but uh, but you can and that's a good idea as well. But you know, we we're working on that, but you can uh, you can use us on the uh, uh, just quick access. Students, you know, in case they don't have their laptops or phone. Or you can use the phone. Yep. But but I think you can, and I can get back to you on that. I, I think you can. You, you you're able to use it on the. Uh, it's the uh, browser. On your, yeah. you, you know, on your phone. So we, we we can work on that as well. But but you can't get everything here on the phone. I do research all the time. If I just go to the regular <laughs> regular web page, because mm -hmm. if you go to our uh, CCSU uh, uh, app. For the phone, mm -hmm. you can you can get to us from there as well. Okay, all right. So I've done research all the time when I wait for the kids to play my son playing soccer or baseball. Sometimes okay. I have things to do, so yeah. I I can, I can look at the uh, phone, look at the game at the at the same time, and it will be so you you can get to the library from uh, the CCSU app as well. 
What, what's the difference between you know, the three tabs that are there? You have databases, e-journals, and central research. Well, central search is you can search everything at one time, but that sometimes gets uh, hard. So you can, uh, and then you can narrow it down. So if you want to just search books, you click on the first radio dial books, or just everything at CCHU, or just the course reserves. You can also search with the other uh, uh, things right there. So, so that's our library catalog. But if you go to databases, it's those 171 databases that you find uh, periodical mm -hmm. information, and those are our electronic mm -hmm. journals. You have a list, mm -hmm. so you can search them all at once or, or or narrow it down. And how many have had the librarians come to class your classes as well? Sometimes your professor can ask them to come, and they will do a research just on your particular topic. Has anybody had the librarian come to class? Which class did you have them come? Um, for? Children's literature. Okay, so they showed you just, yep, you know, that's good, you know, just the, the resources on that. So the main thing is to ask, take a look at our uh, homepage, and if you have any questions as you're going through at the same time, that's why we have the, uh, the online chat, you can, uh, you can ask us as well. And it says right there on the, on the left, ask us. So if you, uh, you can still get help if for some reason the librarians are not online. So I'd also like to talk to you just briefly about, you know, careers in library uh, information science. We have one of the programs here. We don't have a master's program here at Central, but at our sister school, Southern does. I teach part-time in a program, a course on library leadership and advocacy, because I've been doing it a long time, and shows how to lead a library and how to advocate for funds for the library. But 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 there are good career choices that you can make to go in and become a uh, academic librarian or children's librarian. There's librarians in the schools. You can get certified to do that. There's also librarians at uh, the public libraries. How many use their public library? So all the all the librarians there have their library science degree. So you'd, uh, you you could go and, uh, and, and work on the program. They're also for museum studies or historians sometimes do that or they want to become an archivist and they, they want to maintain collections of historical papers and manuscripts. So those are all careers and, and they are a good career so if you, if you ever want to talk about that you can talk to any of our library staff i'd be happy to talk to people too about more about wanting to look into a career in library and information uh, science do you have someone doing archiving in this library yeah we have uh well two people brian matsky works he's a digital humanities librarian and renata vickery is down in the archives and special collections. She she works uh, in our archival uh, collections. So if you go to the top again, uh, back to our homepage again, I'm going to show you about the archives for a second. And what you want to do is wait a minute. So the book, the live. It's somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. You go back to find. Uh, no, no way to go to research. Sorry. There we go, right on the bottom, special collections and archives home. These are all our digital. So you go to archives and special collections will show you what we have. And we're trying to digitize. These are all the collections that we have. We have the Elliot Brewer collection, who our library is named after. Um, these are all, we have slides, old stereoscope slides. If you keep going, illustrated history of the library. We have all these different archival papers that we have in the, the library. And if sometimes researchers will, uh, your research will guide you to these, uh, to these uh, papers as, as well. So we just want to make sure that you know that this uh, under research is here in the archives. And we're trying to digitize most of this through what's called the Connecticut Digital Archives. So everything is digitized and you can discover it. So if you go back to what uh, special collect, go to digital projects and collections right here. This is collections, materials, right? If you go to Connecticut Digital Archives, you just, uh, we have the GLBTQ collection, the O'Neill Archives, top political. Uh, there's one on uh, the Lemon Law, John Woodcock, that's when they had legislation. So you want to get cheated if you bought a used car. We have oral histories from modern languages. If you keep going down, we have a lot of on, on the Polish community, treasures of the special collection. There's a veteran's history that uh, Martin worked on uh, there as well. The Latino History Harvest, if you, if you hit on that, the Latino History Harvest, it will show you these are different uh, uh, pictures in archival things from the Latino community that are in, uh, that are here, and we, and, we, and we connect to that. So if you click this items, collect, if you click on Browse Collections, it'll show you some of the different uh, 
collection. These are different interviews here that, that, that they've done on, on people. So if you want some uh, oral interviews, it's important. Like if you want to search family <laughs> history, it's great. But sometimes going way, way back in family history, we can't get an oral interview, of course. But they, if we've tried to interview people to tell their life story. And that way we could always use this for research and so we don't, we don't forget. So we, we have this Latino uh, history harvest as well here within the special collections. So there's a lot of information and I don't want to give you today information overload. But again, if you have questions, please always come to the library and ask us. And we're also doing, if you go down to the bottom, um, right there, it says in progress pandemic archive. We're trying to get stories of people that, uh, you know, lived through the uh, pandemic and we'll interview them and uh, upload any of their reminiscences, papers and uh, photographs and stuff during the pandemic. So this is how we want to try to share the experience of the community. So even though it happened uh, only a few short years ago, we're going to forget after a while. So we want to have this uh, archi digital archive to, uh, to remember this particular part of our more recent history. We have the yearbooks and a history of the university. So if you want to search some of that as well, you're welcome. How do you get to the yearbooks? Yeah. Some of the yearbooks, we don't have them all digitized yet. We're working on that, but we have them on film that you can get downstairs. But that's one of our projects. We're working more and more to digitize more and more of our collections. It takes a lot of time and, and money. So we're, we're trying to, we're trying to get there. Some of them you do have digitized and they're on available. Yes, yeah. From like the more recent ones. Yeah, the more recent ones are available, uh, you know, through the through our homepage. You can look, and uh, a lot of people ask, "Oh, you know, my dad or mom graduated. They want to see. They want to see what happened years ago." And even the more recent ones, they're here in the uh, archives. So, would you recommend that we do the search under um, the middle tab? Yeah, I try the middle tab uh, as well. But I'd also try with the, some of the some of the, those research guys to start you off as well. That'll really really narrow things down for you. And we have them on specific things. We have them on the more general subjects like psychology. It'll just show you where to where to go or education. Then we have them on some specific uh, classes because if you go to if you go to research again and you go down to uh, the little guys, there we go, and you go and arrow down now. And you go to uh, wait a minute. Let's see now. Go back to the. That's all the guides, but you want to go by uh, by subject. Go right here again. These are all the different subjects. So some are more uh, some are more uh, broad yeah. than others. So it tells you how to all the different subjects. Like see, did education because we have it. So click on the education, and it'll show you all the different ones. There's even some particular courses right right there. So if you go back up to the to that top list, try to go to see if there's some on your on your manatees, go to keep going down. Give real there you go. Oh, we've got history, information. Into this no good interdisciplinary right there. There you go. And it shows you all. Different citation, man. Keep going there, down there. So you have all these different uh, lit guides. If I start here, that's a good question. And they're all even politics. If you don't know politics, so if you click on politics, psychology. psychology research guide too. So if you're doing that, mm. it'll show you. You know, the, the, see, there's a women in politics, world politics research guides. So it helps you mm. narrow it down right here. And if it's still not what you need, again, come in to ask, and we can guide you in the right areas. We try to put on as many, and a lot of professors ask us to do uh, specialty ones just for their class on, a, on particular what assignments. Is it yeah, if you want to go to the Veterans History Project, go again to. Uh, to the arc to the archives yeah. page. I know there's not a lot of people that know about it. So yes. Yep. So go to the archives page right here. Is the archives and page under research? Yep. Yeah, that, there's veterans history. There we go. It's just easier and I, I apologize. Thank you for scrolling for me. <laughs> so but this is our veterans uh, <laughs> uh history uh, project and this is uh friends of the BHP and the, the mission if you could if somebody could read that because it's too far. Yeah. 
As an, as an archive partner with the Library of Con Congress, Central Connecticut State University participates in the Veterans History Project by focusing on the oral histories of Connecticut's residents. Yeah, Connecticut's residents that fought in the war. We go back, we have just a few, yeah, some World War II, we have very few World War I, but then we do all the major conflicts. And if you if you fought in the war, uh, what they'll do is they'll interview you. Martin worked on this, right? Mm -hmm. And they, uh, that you fought in the war, they'll interview you. You can also, uh, uh, they uh, also upload letters or photographs. And it's very helpful if, you, if you're studying some of the conflicts and you want to see what some actual people, uh, their story about fighting in the uh, War. So if you click on search the collections, Excellent. and right here, you could, if you know, some people know their, uh, but if you just search on the, on their, uh, the branch, under the branch, and say you want, say you want to do it, say go to the Air Force, say, or, uh, you know, and then click on search, and this will give you uh, different people. So these are actually people that, so if you click on, on James, the first one, this gives you uh, information, photos, photos, and then if you click on interview, yeah. it will actually give you a, it's an hour interview, but it'll actually give you an interview about him and the, 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 the time that he served. And you could also click by. We have our students, our students, and now we have uh, now we have students that work for us, and we also have Brian Matsky and Julie Maynard, our librarians, that go out to help with this. And we have a great uh, we have a great archive. These are all also shared with the Library of Congress, so um, we, uh, they have them as well. So we're trying to do this like with that Latino History Harvest. We're trying to do more and more of our communities to kind of keep their uh, oral histories alive. With my Italian American culture class, I have students as one of their final assignments go to interview somebody a relative or a friend or i get them someone if they can't find anyone of italian american heritage and they interview them to talk to them about their story some have immigrated their family have immigrated many generations ago they have some stories some have immigrated more recently so they capture their stories and we we're going to make a repository like this for that but this is all for our uh, for our veterans that serve in, in all the branches of, uh, of the service and they're very interesting interviews you can find out a lot what happened uh, by their own stories and they're good to use in papers and projects as well. So it's good that you and you and you used to work for the. What, what did you used to do for the project? Can you tell us? Well, what I used to do is hear all the interviews and transcribe it. We transcribe it. And then upload it to YouTube, and then to hear. So it was a lot of technical, and you helped us very much with that. So we can we had them all, all those, and then that gets used a, a lot by uh, by different uh, people. And it's a good way to remember, you know. And I always say, if you can do something like that for your own family members, my grandmother was close to me. She died at 93, but we had her when she was used to her senior citizen center. They did a, uh, a CD, DVD of her, uh, and I, we lost it, but we wish we had that because she told all about her family history. So it's always uh -huh. good to kind of preserve these things and, and, and things like that. When I went to the U.S. Puerto Rico, I think it's anyone who was like the veterans there, and I asked them all about it. What made them interested in sending it to the military? Mm -hmm. but it was a little controversial because of the bombings yep. on that island. So I think that their stories are very interesting. Yeah, I have them on cassette tapes. Oh, yeah, with cassette tapes, yeah. But that's that, that's a thing that those are interesting uh, interviews. But so you might want to have those changed to put on uh, CDs so you can preserve them better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Try to go to the, like the World War World War One or things like that. In Tennessee, yeah. some of the differences section. So, if you go to war, you go to the pull down menu, you see it's right there. there you go, and you just hit down the World War That's all the records that oh, we have. Oh. So, there's some old, there's only a few that we have because uh, we started the project a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, like, try World War Two or something. Yeah, World War Two, even during the pandemic, we have a, we have a lot more. Oh, yeah. Now click on any one of the links and you're going to see some stuff. So we even had photos, documents. Click on where it says photos and documents right there. That link, some of the link. There you go. You can keep going down. Yep. Some so 
you know, that some of the papers that we did, like yep. we have diaries that we had. Okay. <clears throat> and and they can, uh, we uploaded that. So there's a lot of things like this that we had uh, uploaded. So if you click on that photo and documents archive. Or even down where you see it, where it says assorted document. Yeah, so, you see. so there's pictures. They, now, they don't have to give them to us to keep. We just do it digitally now, and then the family can keep them. But we have them here because people, if people need them. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, and this brings it up. There's his fingerprint, some information. Mm -hmm. That was He was in one of the Stalag. He was in maybe one of the prisoner camps, so that, that was his uh, information right there. So it's just some of the stuff that we maintain here in our collections. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, that was good. I have a question. Um, besides history, majoring in history, what other majors would a person look for if they want to work in a library? Well, they could, because you have a master's degree, you get a master's degree in a library and information science. A lot of people now have a can have a computer background as well as history, uh, English, any of the different majors, because you're going to go get a whole different masters in that in the area of information skills so really any major would uh, would work but a lot of the more people gravitate toward the computer ones or history or, or, a, or wide range. So a wide range of a uh, wide range of uh, majors that, that, okay. that Subjects yeah majors. yeah and, and there's no uh, there's no limit to that okay. it's uh, it's open to you know to like any major because you're going to get another Hi. master's and are those specializations uh, like very centered on how okay, that you. person is going to do the work and yes. how they're going to. Yes, because like a person with, a, I'll say a bachelor's, like you, if you had a bachelor's in history, you might want to go and get the library degree. But then because you already have a bachelor's in history, you might want to get a master's in history as well, so you can work at a larger university. Yeah. Or you might want to, you know, work on getting, uh, you know, you might want to specialize in your library program and archives because oh. it kind of goes with history. Other people right. might want to do more computerized programming and things like that. Right. Or children's, uh, you, you might want to get certified to, to be a children's librarian or a high school librarian. Oh, okay. See, I've been surrounded by libraries and since my childhood. I've always been in the library area, no matter what. So, yes, yeah, so, so it's good. Yeah, so it's really open and it's a really good field. But, you know, a lot of it comes with a computer knowledge because, like Mark was doing, you know, as part of that project, he did, we use it for an example. Most of it is uploading, digitizing, so there's, there's that whole part of it. There's other part, reference librarians do the teaching, they teach information literacy, so they learn about that. So a lot of mm -hmm. people that have, that have teaching background as well, yeah. it, it's helpful. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So any other questions um, from anyone? We just thank you guys for inviting me again. Can you show me how to access the, um, the data that you have on the from graduates or the books that you have? Oh, the yearbooks. I'm not sure that they, I think. Where would it be under? If you, if you, go, if you go to archives, let, let me come to the, the computer because I can mm -hmm. think this up because I just sit here. Mm -hmm. this can, we can bring this to you. Awesome. Okay. This I can sit here too. Mm -hmm. Let me see if you want to Let's see where you're looking for. So I'm, go I'm going right here to uh, to digital the, projects. Yeah, and then if we go right here, the Connecticut Digital Archives online. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna search all collections. Uh, now I'm gonna go to this collection. So we we'll go look at try CCSU yearbooks. A minute, it's not, maybe see, because some of them are still on film, so we're mm. we're in the process of trying to. Could you ask librarian? Because I know um, I took history 301, and we took a lot of trips to the library, and one of them was looking for the yearbooks. So we got a chance to work with um, one of the archivists. Yep, with the Renata. Oh, here we go. Was it called the Dial? One of our newspapers, but this is Yale. But oh. see how Yale's is in there, and but yeah, but I I think that this I can find the information, but 
I, I know a lot of them were just in the, I just looked the other day, we're just in the, uh, in, the process. in the process of digitizing everything. Let, let me try this here and see. If we, see, these are the ones that are uh, New Britain Normal School. See, these are some of the older ones from New Britain Normal School before we were uh, central. Some of the older photographs that we have. This is index to the photographs. We have all of those right in the archives. They're not all digitized yet, but that's if people come to look at their older relatives. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, here it is, right here. Okay, sorry. So on the digital projects? Yep, if you go on the digital projects, then you go to yearbooks. We don't have them all, but. Mm -hmm. Here's some of them here. See, this is what we have so far. Oh, wow. 1925. Wow. Wow. So if you just open up the, the old one, you know, it's just out there finding them here. Oh, I forgot you said the dial. You literally said right Yeah, that's the, name of, that's the name of That's why I put it in the Connecticut, the, the dial. But sometimes it, it would be further down because other things were named the dial as well. But this just shows you everything here. And you just can go like this, see how we digitize it. Oh. Just like opening the book. That's awesome. See, so you can make it uh, mm -hmm. a, little, a little larger if you want to zoom in. And right here, and we used to be called the uh, New Britain State Normal School. So you can. Oh, I know, right? Well, because that was a, the way it was an education school, and that's what how they used to uh, phrase that was a school for Her. teachers. <laughs> that's the teacher. so cool. Wasn't it an old women's teacher school? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What do you mean old women? Well, back, the, back in the day, like centuries, we used to be old women. Old women. Yeah. yeah. Old oh, I thought you said old women. I don't know. So there's, there's Davidson. <laughs> see, it's an old picture of Davidson Hall. Wow, that's amazing. So we have the, yeah. we have all, so that, there, right there, we have all of that. And there's some of the older folks. So that's the uh, that's the collection. So if you want to go and see, that's what they used to. So if you go to uh, go to next. Can you check on 2004? Let me see how far we got them digitized yet. We have all the hard copies. Let's go to the next page. And student newspapers are working on digitizing as well. That's the next uh, project. No, they got it all. Maybe they got the 96. 96. Yeah, we've got to work to, to be, like I say, it's a process because there's so many, but 96 would look. That's why I put the dial in because that's the name of the, that's, uh -huh. that, that's the name of what they call it, the dial. So that was the, well, the out of the blue and see, there's a oh, little, wow. little more color pictures here than happened back wow, then. Wow, that is the wow. 96. Yep, so that's true. So that's the way they look in the 96. That's everybody. See, you recognize anyone up? In 96. Like, I don't know when the teachers. So you the winter here on the campus. And we changed a lot. There's some of the graduates. So we get a lot of calls for this as well. They look so much older. Yeah, what? I've noticed that like Previous People, college students? They still look older. Yeah, or like Why high school that? students in like the 2000s look older than we look in high school. Like, they have I like so mustaches. Kind of trippy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that Miguel Cardona's year? He might be. Yeah. He might be in there. Can you guys see if it, the, the ones, if it's C yet? Uh, what letter is it on, guys? Can you see? Maybe you can um, make it bigger. Yeah, maybe make a bigger one. Because we're not, you know, squinty. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, search. Yeah, on... Okay, so how about C A R? Spell this one. D O N E. So the squirrel tail. <laughs> <laughs> the, squirrel. the squirrel graduated. <laughs> it's a very important education tip. Maybe um, you uh, can't do it by name, but. 
Just, you're on okay. you're on J's, so maybe go forward a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go back a bit now. I mean back. Well, I'm confused. Do we always have picture A? That's a little See, do there we go. That's uh, like, do they still do that? Oh gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So much. Uh, we're going to uh, sign this for you. And we'll give you a copy. Thank you. Can I get our autographs? Gosh. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. That was really interesting. Yes. There's so much knowledge in this library and how to access it is important. <laughs>